The hopes and dreams of the college football playoff ended this weekend for a couple of teams. And with week 10 on the horizon, we're going to go ahead and take a look at my college football top 25, along with my top five Heisman contenders. What's crackalacking? It's your boy, Baroshmo. Just in case you did not know, so go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. A little bit later today, you get to enjoy my stock watch for the 2023 NFL draft. And then hopefully tomorrow, I'll have a seven round mock draft for y'all that's right i'm putting in the work but let's go ahead get into this with my teams that just missed my top 25 with some of uh, familiar faces as a lot of these teams had buys this past weekend with the beavers utsa and maryland uh washington as well but uh washington oregon state they'll kind of settle things this week in college football see who will remain who will be the i guess the last remaining two loss team not to crack the cut here but coastal carolina they, they came up with the win this past weekend uh, i still they got one loss on the season i still feel like they're more pretenders than contenders but they get appalachian state and they have surprised a lot of teams this year with some of their late game heroics utsa i believe has tulsa and then maryland they, they have to travel to madison against wisconsin so they're just on the brink of my top 25 and only had two fallers this weekend with one being Kentucky. They put up a putrid performance against Tennessee and Knoxville. And I didn't really think that game was, I don't want to say I didn't think it was winnable. I mean, of course, Kentucky had a chance, but they came in, crapped the bed, looked terrible, looked horrible. Will Levis, three picks. It was terrible. Uh, Cincinnati, they they lost a tough one against a, a pretty solid central florida team who matter of fact did crack my top 25 this week and let's go ahead and get into the top 25 as central florida is 25 they beat cincinnati so they sneak in here at the 25 spot since i really only had two teams that fell and then nc state they almost they almost just almost lost to Virginia Tech. Kind of wild. They bring in the backup back with quarterback because remember Devin Leary out for the year. And he man, he just like lights a fuel under or fire under this team. And they were able to get past sneak in Virginia Tech this weekend. They believe they do have a much tougher matchup. I want to say it's Wake Forest. Way it is in fact Wake Forest. Luckily they get them at home, but we'll see what happens. I feel like this team is just like they're super fringe right now now that uh honestly their best player is on the bench syracuse tough loss they they managed to get to close in on the game but uh just Notre Dame put them away that's why Notre Dame sneaks into the top 25 this weekend uh they beat in beat in syracuse they, they were up big syracuse managed to bring it in close i know that uh schrader went down for syracuse but Again, it was just unfortunate. Notre Dame, they pull away. Notre Dame, they do get a, and a really big reason I put them in the top 25 here is they get a game at home against Clemson. They can prove, like, hey, they lose. Okay, bam, out. They're fallers. It's fine. They're done. We don't need to talk about them. But this team has been a much different team since the Marshall loss. They really have. I think I, I've been impressed with them. The defense is playing hella good. The offense is looking much better. So let's see if this Notre Dame team are 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 real or not at this point. Uh, Liberty, they had the bye week, but they get Arkansas this week. So we'll see how that goes, man. They're 21. That's They got one loss on the season. It was to Wake Forest team who before the, before the third quarter of that Louisville game looked pretty good. So like honestly not a bad team like not a bad squad i don't know how they'll fare against uh against arkansas but eh, we'll see lsu they had a bye week but they get a alabama in death valley this week so <sighs> godspeed lsu godspeed oklahoma state uh, eviscerated annihilated honestly after that performance against kansas state getting shut out 48 nothing i wanted to drop them out altogether but they are a two loss team and they have beaten very good teams in Big Ten or Big 12 there. So it was hard to drop them completely out. But they're here at 19. Nittany Lions, 
you lost to Michigan, you lost to Ohio State. I feel like those are very forgivable, and they made those games much closer than they should have been, even though uh, the games got got away from them late in the game for against Michigan. It was in the second half. For Ohio State, it was more that fourth quarter. But Penn State honestly doesn't look like a bad team, man. They, they really don't. Kansas State, big, big win. They are alive and well in this Big 12 uh, championship game discussion. Uh, as of course, right now, front runners there are TCU, but uh, I believe things get I don't want to say get easier uh, for Kansas State here on out. As they, excuse me, as they will get uh, Texas this weekend. So uh, luckily it's at home, but still, that's going to be a tough one. Uh, will Howard did look really good for Kansas State. Uh, but, I mean, and then they get Baylor, who ba Baylor's been a much better team in recent weeks. They have to end the year with Kansas. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see when it comes to that. Tulane had the week off. Uh, do they get Tulsa? Maybe I had UTSA and uh, Tulane backwards. Let's see. But this is a one-loss team. Uh, they do have Tulsa this week. So who does UTSA have? UTSA. UAB. My bad. My bad. My bad. Just swap the blue and the orange. They both wear gold. What can I say? But Tulane uh, is, is a team that only has a loss to what? Kansas State? No, no. They beat Kansas State. Who is Tulane's only loss to this season? Off the top of my head, I, I do not know. But this team playing very good, and they look like they are going to win the American. Uh, Southern Miss. Oh, it's a strange one. But they beat Kansas State the week before that. Uh, they've already taken on some pretty solid squads in, like, Memphis, Eastern Carolina there in the American. Of course, the tougher part of the uh, their schedule is ahead of them as they end the year against the powerhouses of the American Conference in Central Florida, SMU, and then Cincinnati. So we'll see if this two-lane team is legit or not. But yeah, man, they're, they're slowly creeping up them rankings. And then top 15, Wake Forest. Yeah, listen, they sucked in that third quarter. What, they had two pick sixes, like six turnovers in that third quarter. It got utterly blown out. But this is this is a team that they, they have decent wins. They're, they're not going to probably be competing for the ACC unless Clemson just craps the bed. But this isn't a bad Wake Forest team. At least I don't believe this is a bad Wake Forest team. Illinois, man, they get Wisconsin. And uh, do they get Wisconsin? I feel like I said that about Maryland. Um, no, they get Michigan State. So easy. That, that should be easy. They're in the driver's seat right now of the division vision and should should well be on their way to uh playing in the conference title game against uh winner of michigan state ohio state uh outside of michigan and purdue they don't have too many scary teams left on the schedule so really should be a shoe in that purdue game should kind of seal it for them so as long as they don't get upset like yeah illinois should be contended for the title this year in the big 10 North Carolina, they had a scare this week. They had a scare. They were able to pull away late. But Pittsburgh gave them a scare. Man, Drake May, he playing great football. They, they basically, they're on route to the ACC championship game. Don't mess up when it comes to the rest of North Carolina's schedule. Let's actually see that real quick. Uh, see what they have at hand. As uh, they do get Virginia this week, not worried about that. Uh, they get Wake Forest. That's gonna that's gonna be a big one. And then end of the year, Georgia Tech. And then NC State feels like you can't sleep on NC State just simply because you know. I feel like this is gonna be it's still a good good football team. A lot of talent. Took the big hit at quarterback. But it's really Wake Forest. Wake Forest is the big game for them. Don't screw it up. You got your path set. USC, uh, closer than you would like, went over Arizona, but with that offense, man, that that's a that's a very good offense. They were down Jordan Addison, 
uh, this game, though they probably didn't really need them, though again, the game was closer than you expected. But USC, it's a one-loss squad. Uh, they lost against a very good squad in Utah to a two-point conversion at the end of the game. Don't sleep on USC. Utah, uh, they, they managed to win without Cam Rising. Solid, solid effort there on Thursday or Friday night against Washington State. They remain contenders in the Pac-12 there as this week they will get... Who, who do y'all got? Arizona. So Arizona might be feeling... Oh, well, to be fair, to be fair, Utah does have this one at home. Then going to my top 10, UCLA. They went in, did their thing against Stanford. Never was close. Good outing. Their one loss this year came against Oregon, who has just been freaking on fire since the Georgia loss. So yeah, they're still going to be contenders there in the Pac-12. Ole Miss... They skate by against uh, Texas A&M, but again, another team that is still only a one-loss team. Uh, hopefully, they could get things together. Let's see where uh, they actually get the week off before I think they go head-to-head -head against pretty confident Alabama. That's the I think the following after this week they get Alabama. Let me confirm that real quick so i'm just not speaking out my butt but i mean hey man they got the win in college station uh the freshman for texas a&m honestly made it look like this team like a&m like because that was the thing for a&m coming into this game was or coming into the season was like man quarterback position is kind of scuffed and this guy came in and had a really really good game to be fair old miss defense has kind of been meh but is what it is uh yes they get alabama on the 12th and they uh, end the year with arkansas and mississippi state so yeah well we'll see what happens at that bama game uh oregon they did their thing against cal in terms of who they got in the future let's see they got colorado this week so the honestly it should be Another game where we're like, whoa, Bo Nix is back. But end of the year with Washington, Utah. Utah being the big one because they're legit contenders. Then Oregon State, like low-key, kind of contenders. So can't sleep on them either. But yeah, Oregon currently the uh, front runner for the Pac-12. Speaking of front runners, we got TCU here uh, who had the... Uh, the interesting game against uh, West Virginia. Can't sleep on West Virginia. That's not a bad football squad. So I'm, it doesn't it surprise me that the game was close. But still, uh, it, it makes it feel like this Big 12 is still very much open. But TCU having a banger year. Alabama, uh, they had the week off. And then now they travel to Death Valley to go face off against LSU. Big game there. Because Alabama... They have to win out and win the SEC championship game if they want to make the college football playoff. I mean, hey, this is the thing. At least you know the route. You know, hey, we can't screw up from here on out. They know the route. We've seen Bama do it before. Going to the top five, Clemson. They had the week off. They will go to they will go to Notre Dame. They will uh they 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 say, hey, DJU, he's our quarterback. This is the starter. Let's see how he does against a very good Notre Dame defense so big game there michigan again we're uh, with michigan i'll say we're not going to know much until the game what at near the end of november right after thanksgiving we won't know much so they won't be flipping too much in the polls for me until that game tennessee big win over uh kentucky i almost forgot because it wasn't even a game but a uh, big win over kentucky now biggest game of the year they travel to Athens. They have to face the Georgia Bulldogs. This will decide for the most part, unless again one of these teams craps the bed from here on out. This will decide who wins the SEC East and will go on to face uh maybe Bama. There's other teams in contention there, but we kind I kind of figure it'll probably be Alabama, but yeah, this will decide who goes to the SEC championship game? Big game. That's our watch along this week. That's going to be a freaking ton of fun. Uh, Ohio State uh, really relied on the defense heavily this game against, uh, especially in the second half against Penn State. Uh, the Marvin Harrison looked like a monster outside of that. 
they weren't really getting much done offensively, but they, they were able to pull through. Them in Michigan, they're on November 26th, I believe. It's going to be a banger game. That's going to be a game of the week, so that probably be the game we watch. And then Georgia, they remain first. Uh, they basically took care of business against Florida. Let Florida kind of get back into it. But for the most part, they controlled that game from the get-go. They get Tennessee game of the week. Easy breezy. So that's my top 25. Again, let me know what you think in the comment section below. And let's go ahead and move on to my Heisman candidates because not much is changing as Blake Corum led the league this week, led all of college football in force missed tackles as he went off against Michigan State, had a banger game, two touchdowns. So Blake Corum finds himself here. Caleb Williams, five touchdown performance against Arizona. Really the heart and soul of this USC team. So, yeah, he's not going anywhere. And then we move on to Bryce Young, who had the week off, but big game in, in Death Valley against LSU this weekend. He has been the backbone for this Alabama, not just team, or not just offense, but team. Th this cat has been getting it done. And then... CJ Stroud, he only had the tutty. It wasn't like the best game from Stroud, but for the most part, like he's he's still putting up Heisman numbers. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of hard to knock him down from here. But Head and Hooker, no one's having a better year than Head and Hooker. He comes in four total touchdowns against Kentucky. Let's see what he does against Georgia this week. He has literally been the best player in college football. It is hard uh, if if someone has someone other than Head and Hooker. As a, their Heisman front runner, they're drinking, they're drunk, they're on some sort of substance that is affecting their thinking. They're not thinking straight. It's Hendon freaking Hooker. He is the front runner for the Heisman. We'll see how he does this week in Athens. But uh, that's it for the video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, till next time. You be easy, my friends. Later.